So with the global bike and bike part shortage, there's probably no better time uh, than now to get into wrenching on your own bike. And the anchor of any good home repair set is gonna be a bike stand. In this video, I'm going to compare two bike repair stands. Over here, we've got the Park PCS 10.3, and on this side, the Feedback Sports uh, Pro Elite. Which one's right for you? Which one do I think is better for whatever circumstance? Let's find out. Okay, so the first one I'm going to review is the Feedback Sports Ultimate Pro Elite. Pro Elite, says right there. This is what it looks like in its folded state, and it's actually a really nice profile. When Laura and I go on road trips, this is usually the bike stand I take, just because it folds up fairly neatly. You can see the legs here collapse, they form kind of this triangle. So when putting it in the side of a, a garage, it stays up fairly easily. Of the two bike stands, this is definitely the lighter one. I believe the, the legs and most of the body is aluminum, whereas on the park, uh, it's got a big hunk of steel. So let's set it up. Fairly easy to set up. I like to uh, get the arm out first, then kick out the tripod style legs, and then adjust uh, the stand to height. So pretty straightforward in terms of setting up and pretty fast as you guys saw. In terms of features, this is the knob that helps us control how we're gonna angle the bike on the stand as well as torquing it down to hold the bike in place. The clamp design on this one is pretty cool. It's got this uh, red panic button of sorts. You hit it and it slides out in this nice kind of satisfying click. And to put a bike in, you just slip it in there, get it mostly shut and then use this to kind of fine tune the, uh, the clamp. Another nice feature on this stand is there is a rest here. So if you want to do a quick uh, drive train check and you don't want to clamp the bike in, you can just put the nose of the saddle over here. So let's put a bike in. One thing to, to notice is that the legs are a tripod and typically uh, if I'm putting, especially a heavy bike, I'm putting one of the legs straight out that, with the idea being that the weight is gonna help stabilize the stand. I'm gonna put my timber jack on here because this is one of the heavier bikes I have in the fleet. To put a bike on there, you just uh, get it in the clamp shut it and then adjust it like so. Okay, so we've got the bike in the stand. It's uh, it's drooping, hold on. <laughs> so I have found this kind of endemic to the stand is that it does need periodic tightening uh, to keep things in place. Um, doesn't take a whole lot of tools, you just need a screwdriver. Okay, so the bike is in the stand. Um, you can see that the pedals clear the stand you will have to tighten the clamp fairly well because if you don't, there's a tendency for the bike to kind of twist in the stand. And since the central column is perfectly vertical, if it gets a little bit askew, the pedal is going to start hitting that central column. Straighten out the handlebar here, or I'm going to straighten out the bike. We'll see how well it holds. It's fairly easy to adjust. Again, this does require a fair amount of force to keep uh, the bike level in this position. Otherwise it'll droop. Regardless of which stand you get, you should definitely get one of these guys. This is the Park Tool handlebar holder. And that prevents the bike from doing this weird floppy stuff up here. So I'm gonna secure it to the stand. So this mountain bike is about 30 pounds. And I found this is kind of the upper limit for this style uh, bike stand. Otherwise it gets a little bit tippy. You can see it doesn't take a whole lot to kind of uh, destabilize this rack. I've had it where I've removed a front wheel and the weight gets thrown off and then the whole stand almost falls over before I catch it. And that's one of the issues of this kind of tripod foot design. You really have to be cognizant of how the weight is distributed and also anticipate how the weight will change when you remove uh, a front wheel or a rear wheel. Because I usually position uh, this stand with one of the legs pointed out perpendicular from the bike for the most stability in this direction. I do find I have to kind of dance over it on occasion. Okay, so this is the Feedback Sports Pro Elite. To pop it off, I'd like to shoulder the bike, give this a little bit of a half twist, and then hit the panic button. That pops right open, whoa! <laughs> 
and the bike is free. I'm gonna demonstrate one more thing and that is putting the bike on the saddle rest here. So there's lots of instances where you'd wanna do this if you're just doing a, a quick repair or uh, with a, a bike where you can't clamp around anywhere safely. And when it's like this, uh, you have to be fairly careful to not hit the central column. My pedals are kind of brushing it or it's hitting it now. Not an issue if you run small SPDs, but if you do have bikes with flat pedals like, like I do, because the central column is straight up and down and doesn't skew away like the Park One, uh, this is a little bit dodgier situation to work on your bike. Break down the stand, it's really easy. Uh, again, I usually undo this part first. Couple turns, open up the quick release here, lower it, and then bring up the legs and tighten this guy down and good to go. So I really like this one for travel just because it's such a neat package. To get the best out of it in terms of stability, you have to be really uh, cognizant of how you place the legs and the general weight of the bike. So let's look at the park tool next. All right. So this is the Park Tool PCS 10.3, noticeably heavier than the Feedback Sports one. Uh, that is because of the steel construction. You can also see in this state, it doesn't lay quite as neat as the Feedback Sports one. The bottom of the legs form kind of an uneven triangle there. So a little bit wobbly if you were to just kind of casually leave it up uh, against the wall. You have to be a little bit more careful of placement otherwise this might fall out. You could break this down further uh, so it's a little bit smaller. You can open up the quick release and pull out this guy, but then you've got two pieces, but uh, it, does, it does make it a little bit smaller. This is the newer of the two stands to me. And when it arrives, there is some assembly involved. Park Tool has a great YouTube channel that shows you how to do it. It's not too hard. We don't pull it right out of the box like you would with the Feedback Sports one. So in terms of setting this up, fairly easy. First part is to drop the legs. They pop into place. There's a little uh, button here that keeps the legs in the correct place. Then you would tighten down the legs with this knob. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a knob there. Quick release to raise and lower this guy and set it and then close it. This also comes with a very small and petite uh, tool tray. So to rotate the bike in the clamp, uh, there's this adjustment here. This just kind of repositions the handle for better purchase. So when you put the bike in here, uh, this is kind of a, a camming lever. So you would have it in its most open position, then close it most of the way, and then tighten it down the rest of the distance. So in some ways, kind of similar to that red panic button, just in a different form, but you get the same functionality. Again, on top here, there is also kind of a, a saddle nose rest, if you will. And one of the biggest differences is if you look at uh, the, the shape of the stand, this, the central column isn't vertical, so it gives a little bit more clearance when you're, when you're spinning the pedals, which is nice. So let's, let's put the bike on here and see how stable it is and, and what it looks like. Oh, I should mention, looking at the feet, and how the weight is distributed. You've got this big open fork. When you put a bike on here, it wants to go this way and it's really well supported. There is no middle leg dance here. You do have to kind of pay attention to the outer ones. I find this leg distribution a little bit less trippy, if you will. And also because uh, there isn't a, a third leg jutting out this way, you can get it flush against a wall. Whereas with the Feedback Sports, since it's kind of splayed in three directions, you kind of have to finesse it. Okay, let's get the bike in here. So to get the bike in, same kind of thing. You would lift it up, put in a clamp, use the cam to get it mostly closed, and then fine tune the closure. So let's set it up so it's kind of parallel. Again, using the handlebar holder, which is oh so handy. Love this thing. Who knew something so simple could bring so much joy? So you can see fairly stable. In my short time with this so far, I haven't had an issue of the, of the main column drooping down. 
But if I were to adjust it, it works just like a regular bike quick release. There's a, a loose nut and then the cam lever. So no tools necessary. I don't have to bring out a screwdriver. Just turn the nut, get it to the right tension and then close the quick release. Let's put a couple of pedal spins on this just so you can see how stable it is. The legs are rock solid. When I was doing this same kind of motion with the Feedback Sports, I could see that some of the legs were starting to lift up off the ground, but here it's just, it's just planted. Rock solid in the leg department. So let's put it at some weird angles, still holding pretty good. And then I'm gonna pop off the front wheel. We'll see how it reacts to a change in weight. Okay, didn't even, didn't even flinch. So again, still pretty stable. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the, these two legs aren't moving a whole lot. And I mean, I can kind of lift it up and bring it towards me, but because of the design of the legs, it's, it's automatically, uh, it automatically wants to go back down. Of the two, in terms of stability with the leg design, I think it goes to the park pretty easily. I'm gonna move the stand so you can see the pedal clearance. Ugh. And you can see this is where this design really shines uh, because it is not just going up and down. Lots of clearance for the pedal. No, no fear of accidentally hitting this with the pedal. Is that to remove it? A couple turns to undo, release the cam, and then it will drop. So I've got the bike on the, the saddle rest here. It's away from the wall, so it's kind of floating in space, giving it a couple turns. And it's got pretty good pedal clearance. Uh, one thing to note is the saddle rest here is, is at a bit of a slope, as opposed to the Feedback Sports one where it's perfectly level. So if you have a heavy enough bike, let's say an e-bike, this may kind of slide towards the central post. And depending on what pedal you have, you might get some slappage just like that. But generally pretty good, probably not a problem with a road or gravel bikes, but the heavier the bike uh, you got, probably the more likelihood that this, it might slip down here. So uh, let's fold it up. The way that I found works best for me is to unscrew the bottom legs here. Uh, there's that button, just push that down and then lean the whole thing forward. So that'll get the legs moving and then you can bring it home uh, the rest of the way like that. And then from here, loosening this quick release, shutting it like so. So fairly easy once you get the hang of it. Um, again, it does not break down as neatly as the Feedback Sports. So that is something to consider. Okay, so that is the overview of the Park uh, PCS 10.3 and the uh, Feedback Sports Ultimate Elite. Pro, or is it just the ultimate elite? The pro elite, the pro elite. <laughs> Which one is right for you? Both are pretty stable, but I think if you're going to really prioritize stability at the expense of weight and portability, then I would go with the Park PCS 10.3. Just super stable, surprisingly so. I've had no issues with this uh, stand so far with bikes potentially tipping over. I have had that happen uh, with the Pro Elite when I'm not careful and I just pop a wheel off and legs aren't uh, positioned correctly. So most stable one definitely hands down goes to the park. If you're looking for a lightweight one uh, that, that travels really well, that's, that compacts pretty easily into a nice neat package that you can shove into a corner of a van or a truck, then I think the Feedback Sports one is probably the better rack. So you sacrifice you know, overall stability, but gain portability. Both have excellent clamp systems. Uh, to me, the Feedback Sports one with the red panic button, probably a little bit easier for, you know, like a non-techy, non-bikey person to figure out. This one with the cam, not as obvious to use, but I think is a super sturdy system and just takes a couple minutes or an hour using this and you'll get the hang of it. In terms of price, the park stand's actually less expensive at about $240. I know it's not cheap, but it is an investment. It'll save you some time and money if you can work on your bike at home and not send it to a shop. Feedback Sports one, actually more expensive. Uh, depending on the package that you get, 
This can range anywhere from 315 to 330 uh, if you get it with a tool tray and a tote bag and all that stuff. But I believe just the bare stand uh, you can pick up at REI for 315. Which one do I personally like the most? Uh, I have been gravitating towards the park one when working in the garage here. It's just a lot more stable, um, less, less tippy. <clears throat> I don't have to dance over the central foot as much if you're in a really kind of confined space. So leaning towards the park for home use. I think when we go on a road trip, um, it's a little bit more cumbersome to, to pack well. Uh, then that's where I think I would lean towards the feedback sports. So that's why I think, let me know what you think, which is your uh, repair stand of choice. Let me know in the comments below. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments. And if you like this content, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon. Check out the link. It keeps these videos coming. And as always, keep the supple side down.